Tip Tut. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to take a look how to create a cinema graph. And for those who don't know, a cinema graph is essentially a piece of video um, that you turn into an image. However, you retain the movement on a certain section. For example, here you can see that this person sitting on this um, lake uh, walkway is completely still, but the ripples on the water underneath the bridge are still moving. However, the reflection of his feet are also still. It's a really cool technique. Pretty easy to do. Um, so let's just dive right in then. I'm just going to stop that from playing. The first thing you're going to want to do is find a piece of footage that has a uh, perfectly still camera. For example, I have um, this video here, which we've used uh, called Lake. Um, the camera is completely still. The guy moves. That's totally fine. It's not a problem. But the camera cannot move at all because otherwise um, it's not going to work. Basically, if there's any movement in the camera, then the whole thing is going to jump around when you try and freeze it, but move certain sections. So all you're going to want to do is drag that into Photoshop and it'll open it up on the videos panel. Perfect. This will automatically open up the timeline panel as well. Then you just need to find a nicely looping area of your video. Now we can pretty much use any part of this because the only thing that's really moving is uh, the water rippling and the boats moving around and, and such stuff like that. OK, um, so you're going to need to find a short section which loops pretty much seamlessly. For example, you can see that on the ledge uh, on the edge there on the left, uh, that little jetty moves around quite a lot. So we want an area where it doesn't move too much. Um, so I think I did somewhere around here. Let's do. So you drag the area to where you want the start of your loop and you can just literally trim that path by clicking and dragging in and that'll push it all the way to the left. Then you need to find the end of your loop. I use fi finally, uh, excuse me, I seem to find <laughs> rather that uh, around a one or two second loop tends to work well. Okay, so if we find something about that long and drag the underside of our clip. Now this leaves us with a two second clip that when we play, doesn't loop seamlessly, but it's all right. It doesn't look too bad. We just need to get rid of that jutter as it reaches the end of its clip, okay? Um, now it's important to note that it only has to look good on the areas which you're gonna move. So for example, these boats up here, they're gonna be still, his upper body is gonna be still, and his legs are gonna be still. So we really need to worry about the rippling in the water, which we can kind of get away with, um, it looks. Not too bad, okay? So to get rid of that jump then, all you need to do is select your video group and hit Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac, and that'll duplicate the group. Make sure you're on the folder, not on the piece of footage, otherwise that'll just duplicate it and put the footage next to it here. Then we need to basically make the first frame of this video also be the last frame so that it will loop seamlessly. Now this next bit's a little bit daunting, but it's not too much of a problem. Drag your top layer all the way over to the right so that it snaps to the end of the footage underneath it, okay? Then what you're going to want to do is move that cursor over to that uh, last frame, so you know that you're on it exactly, and drag to extend, not to move, the footage on top, so you've got a little bit of overlap, okay? Now, all this is done, as this is made, this frame here be at the end here on the layer above, OK, so this frame now on this piece of footage, because we extended it rather than moving it, yeah, is the exact same as this frame here. OK, we don't need the rest of this, so we can trim that off. So now our jump is going to be here. OK, looks very ugly, but that's not a problem because we're just going to fade these over so that these two blend into each other. Now, you won't need to do this on all cinema graphs. Some ones will kind of loop seamlessly purely by chance, and that's great. This is just if you don't have that perfect loop. OK, so drop down or twirl down your copy on top like so. And we're just going to keyframe opacity by clicking the little stopwatch. And that gives us a variable that we can edit on opacity, which is see throughness for those who don't know. Um, move your cursor to the end or near the end of your clip and click the little diamond again, not the stopwatch, because that will remove all keyframes. So the stopwatch basically says, yes, we want to make this editable. And then that gives you the option here to choose and add keyframes wherever you'd like. Click the little arrow to go back to the first one, head over to your opacity, and just drag that down to zero. And what we've done here is we've had uh, this second piece of footage fade up from completely invisible to completely visible at the point where this last frame is the same as this first frame. OK, and what that means is when we play this, we should get a pretty much once it's rendered a little bit 
seamless loop. It's just got to go through that once. There we go. You can see that you can see where the fade is on his feet and stuff like that, but those aren't going to be moving. But you can see now that all the movement under here on the water looks pretty much seamless. Okay, so that's exactly what we need. Perfect. Now we just need to decide which areas of our image uh, need to remain still. Now to do that, it's very important that you grab your first video layer, not the copy, because obviously that's going to be faded in certain areas. And what we want is a clean slate. And just hit Control J again and drag that onto the top. So let's quickly name our layers. We've got background, we've got our fade layer, and we've now got our still. Okay, so now you'll notice that we're back to where we started visually. The one on top is a ugly, non-looping video. But that's okay, because all we want to do now is choose the frame which we want to be still. So I'm going to choose somewhere where his legs are in a nice angle, maybe something like that. Um, and they're covered up a little bit by the grass to make it a bit easier for the masking. That's fine. Now, when you go to your layer here and right click and choose rasterize layer, that will turn this layer into a JPEG or a still image, not necessarily a JPEG. Um, so when you scrub along, you'll notice that there are absolutely no changes. And that's great. That's what perfectly what we need. So all we need to do now is basically cut a hole in this top layer to show the moving video underneath. And the way we're going to do that is with masks. So click on your mask icon down here and that creates a mask on top. Grab yourself a black brush, making sure that you have your mask selected, not your layer selected. OK, and then we're essentially going to mask out. So the areas that you're drawing are going to be cut out from the footage. OK, so there is two ways you can do this. You can do it with a brush like so. Um, but that's quite ugly for this. Since we already have quite a clean line, we might as well do it properly with the pen tool. You literally grab your pen tool and along the bridge here, we're just going to choose this whole section right click make selection and then brush it out okay and what this does is we can make it a brush big as we like and messy as we like scribble the whole area and you get a nice clean cut there okay Control d will deselect that you then want to go down to a nice small brush and zoom all the way in and we'll sort out these little problems that he's got with his feet here okay so you'll notice now that the water probably looks fine but as we scrub through or we can just play it rather um, as we play this, and it'll just take a second to render, you can see that we get a bit of ghosting on his feet. And that's because his feet are moving around far too much for them to match when we're fading this out. OK, so once this is rendered once, um, I am obviously recording my screen, so my computer is going to freak out a little bit. You can see that those have little ghosting faded images there. Now, all we need to do is basically take a rough area of where these um, feet need to be masked, and we'll just add some of that mask back in. OK, so I know that it's roughly this area, but I don't want to go too much into the um, water underneath because we'll lose those ripples. So we'll zoom in just one more time and we'll just see if we can paint over those. Just there to catch the edge of that foot, all the way over here to catch those. And you'll notice that it'll obviously we're adding back in our image here. So um, that'll stop these feet from moving around in that particular section. If we were to zoom out, for example, and choose play, you can see if there's any uh, messed up bits um, where the foot maybe might eke out past the mask that we've done, but it looks all right. Just need to watch that pre-rendered. That seems fine. We haven't lost too many uh, ripples in the water either, so that's totally fine. So the other thing we need to do now is just match back in the reflections of those. OK, so we'll zoom back into here and we'll do the same with his feet in the water. Sort of roughly this whole area. And again, not too much of the water. Otherwise, we'll lose the ripples. OK, there we go. And let's check out that. Just let, wait for it to pre-render. Perfect. There we go. And we've got a seamlessly looping similar graph. It really is as simple as that. And it looks really, really cool. So the best way to export this is uh, as a GIF. Um, or if you want to embed it into a website, you can do it as an MP4 and then make that loop using um, CSS and stuff like that. You know, So that's nice and easy. But if you want to use this as a GIF, um, which most people do, you just choose export for web or save for web. Choose the GIF option um, and just make sure your image size isn't too large, something like 500 pixels wide. And the last thing, of course, is to make sure that you're setting your looping to forever and then just save your GIF. Um, we'll just save this to the desktop and we'll call it Lake and hit save. And then if we preview that. There we are. Bit of compression loss there because I did a quick export, but you can see 
it works absolutely fine and looks really good. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. I hope you learned something. Let me know if you liked it, if you want more stuff like this, and I'll do my best. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.